Well, praise the Lord on this wonderful day that the Lord has made. Pastor Prince here with you for another opportunity that we can break bread together in the fellowship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray that God is keeping you and your loved ones, wherever you may be joining in with us on today. We are truly excited for the opportunity of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We'll be coming today from the book of James, James chapter 2, verse 26. Amen. James chapter 2, verse 26 happens to be the last verse of that book of James 2. Amen. James 2 and 26. As we say, we are mighty glad for the opportunity of sharing the good news. With that being established, we'll go ahead and open up with prayer, and then we'll hear what the Lord has for us on today. Amen. Most heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you for your grace and your tender mercies that touched our bodies and our minds to be regulated on you on this day. We ask that you would continue to open up the doors that the enemy is trying to block. We know that you are the author and the finisher of our very plight here on earth, and we surrender all to you right now. I pray that you would be able to open the ear and the hearts of them that will receive what you would have for us on today. Let our will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to have the consciousness to be our brother's keeper. Help us to have the will to keep holding on to your unchanging hand. We thank you in advancement for every provision that you'll allow to fall in our pathway. We thank you for the challenges, God, because we know that with the challenges come strength, and you promise never to leave us nor forsake us, even in our moment of deepest challenges. We ask that you would give us an ear to hear what you would have for us today. Anoint these clay lips to speak life, truth, power, encouragement, hope to your people, both near and abroad. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the sweet Holy Spirit, we say thank you, Lord, and amen. Good morning, Sister Prince. Good morning. Would you be so kind to read James Chapter 2, verse 26, please. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Amen. Thank God for the reading of the word. Thank God for the hearing of the word. And more importantly, thank God for the doing of the word. Amen. And if I were to label this particular message on today, we know that when the dust settles, it's about looking at the man in the mirror. Amen? The man in the mirror. Now, we know and understand that there are a lot of things that happens in life. There are a lot of challenges, there are a lot of setbacks, there are a lot of opposition. But when the dust has settled, as it's been so noted, only what we do for Christ is going to last. And the man in the mirror, i.e. person in the mirror, really has the final say-so. Oh, yes, we can have a rough patch of bad luck. We can have some heartaches, some setbacks. But when the dust is settled, is what we decide to do with the opportunities that presented before us on every obstacle and turn. Just because you're going through don't mean God is not worthy of a praise. Just because you have a setback doesn't mean that God is still not worthy of all the honor. So the man in the mirror must decide 
that if they meant what they said or were they just providing lip service, amen, which is back to our main text on today, James 2 and 26. For the body without the spirit is dead. Your body is not your body because of your figure. Your body is your body because of the spirit. Because when God created man, he breathed in his nostrils, which made him a living soul. Therefore, before the the breath of God was breathed through the nostril of man, he was nothing. He was just totally existing. And we understand that we're going to live for God is not about just existing. It's about having total fulfillment in achieving that which the Lord has set before us to achieve. And what is our achievement? What is our main goal? To build the kingdom of God while here on earth. So when we understand that, yeah, we need the body to get from point A to point B, but the spirit should be what's navigating the body. And what's navigating or should be navigating the spirit is the word of God. Amen. So when we understand that, yes, we can make our mouth say anything, but it's not what we say. It's really what we do. And it's not what we do, but how we do what we do. So the man in the mirror. I am thinking and reflecting on the legendary Michael Jackson and his song, The Man in the Mirror. said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror and I'm asking him to change his ways. And when we, when we understand that as much as we would like to, we cannot change anyone. That person changes. A, because they are being navigated and led by the Spirit of God, and B, they want to be navigated and led by the Spirit of God. No matter how much we try to be there for an individual, no matter how much we try to lecture an individual, no matter how much you try to do for an individual, that person will not change without the aid of God and the willingness to want to change. So you can talk to your blue in the face. You can holler and even have a pity party. But until that person faces the man in the mirror, you're really wasting valuable time. Now, I want you to understand me. I'm not saying that you give up on people and you cast people to the side and you move on about your life. But do remember this, we can only do so much. Can't no man make a woman get right, and can't no woman make a man get right. They get right because they choose to get right. They are tired of the path that they're on, and they say, it's time for change. And that necessarily has nothing to do with you nor I. It's just the ability to hear what thus says the Lord when the Lord is speaking ever so clear to that said individual. So when we understand that that the, the change starts within, the change starts with self-analysis. The change starts with being true to thyself. You can't stop being a thief until you stop stealing. It's really that simple. You can't stop being a liar until you stop lying. 
No one makes you lie. No one makes you steal, contrary to what populists may believe. We steal because we want to. We lie because we want to. Therefore, the man in the mirror must say, enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Let, let me help somebody. I don't know who you are. I don't know what, what your situation is, and I'm not probing or, or uh, trying to be nosy or some folk would even declare messy. But here, here's a known fact. Here's a known fact. And I was guilty of it at one point in my life when it seemed like that every relationship that I would get in, it, it, it ends up being the same way. And, and it starts out one way, but it ends up another way. And then you come to this falsehood that says, well, quote, unquote, all women are the same. Or quote, unquote, this is how women are. Or this is how men are. There are no good men. Men, all men are no good. So whatever narrative that you come up with, but when you really look in the mirror, hello, somebody, the, the common denominator is you. The common denominator is me. Why is it that it starts off with this way, but it always ends up the way the others have ended up? Well, there is an answer to that question. And in majority of the cases, we are so quick to jump from one relationship to the next without having the proper spiritual cleansing. Let me say that again. We are jumping from one relationship to the next without having the proper spiritual cleansing. And here's what happened. You've heard me use the term residue in times past. Residue is something that was left behind, and it can be long gone, but the residue is still left behind working over time. So what happens, you're in this relationship, you get out of this relationship, you start anew, you get with your buddies, your girlfriends, and say, it's time for a new day, and you meet your new boo, your new sweet, your new honey drop, whatever the case may be. And without that spiritual cleansing, you still got the residue, hello, somebody, of the person that you are trying to overcome or rid yourself of. And sooner or later, because that person's residue has remained in your spiritual nature, it begins to take over the latest invite. And it starts taking on the habits of the very thing you thought you would replace it. And you get to a point after 90 days or so, like this joker is just like the other joker I thought I was getting rid of. In fact, they are worse than what I was getting rid of. And then you get confused even more, and you'll sometimes run back to the very thing that God tried to get you away from because you're thinking, well, if this one is bad, then I might well go back to where I came from because at least I knew that one a little bit better than this. And so, uh, saying, well, I don't want to deal with a new fool. I'll just stick with the old fool I got. Well, if you're dealing with fools, period, maybe it's time to have that spiritual cleansing. I'm just saying. So when, when, when you understand that what the next part of our scripture in James 2.26, for faith without works is dead. Man in the mirror, man in the mirror, you can make your mouth say anything. You can promise till the sun rises and set again. Okay? You've got to put in the work. You've got to make it happen through your action. You could say you want to do something until it's time to do it. You cannot wish 
things away. You have to work things away. You have to work through the challenge. You have to pray, yes. You have to fast, yes. But you must also, as the word reminds us, occupy till I come. You must put in the work. Had an old preacher used to say, sometimes we need to set aside the hallelujahs and put on your do your Lewis. What am I trying to say? Yeah, we can shout, we can dance, we can cry, we can turn cartwheels. But when the dust is settled, after you've done your bodily exercise, you still have work to do. You still have to put in the time. You still have to put that word in your spirit life. You still have to be a son or daughter of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You must put in the word. So when the man in the mirror gets to that point of no return, and they say, you know what, I'm tired of this. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of playing these games with myself and, and lying to other folks and you, you're promising you're, you're acting right because certain folks you think are watching you. But what about when you're standing all alone? What about when it's just you and the Lord? Do you have the integrity? Do you have the compassion? Do you look at that man in the mirror and say, it's nobody but me and you, Lord. Here I am. Open my heart. Open my ears, guide my steps, that I can be that son or daughter that you're calling me to be and not what I'm calling myself. Understanding that what we do for Christ is what's truly going to last. And if I'm if I'm going to do this thing in a manner that will have the Lord say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things is going to start with that man in the mirror. I can't have a successful marriage until I look at that man in the mirror. I don't care what my spouse is doing or not doing, but if I want to have a successful marriage, not saying that it's not going to be challenges from time to time, but the successful marriage is going to start with that man in the mirror. Don't take things personal. Don't look at what the others should be doing. Do what you can to make it work. And I'm not just talking about marriage. I'm talking about relationships, period, whether it's a friend, whether it's a coworker, whether it's a foe. You must look at that man in the mirror and say, what can I do to make this a better situation? What have I done? to make this a better situation? What have I done to create the situation that I'm in right now and adjust from the man in the mirror? It's amazing how we see ourselves compared to how other folks see us. Sometimes we're too critical on ourselves, and sometimes we're not critical enough on ourselves when it comes to looking at the man in the mirror. If you know that you are trying to get from point A to point B and there are no cutting corners, there are no shortcuts, you have to look at that man in the mirror. I stated earlier, if I am a thief, how I overcome from being a thief is I must stop stealing. And watch this. Even if you are a thief, there's still room at the cross for you, but you have to be able to look at that man in the mirror and say, yes, I'm a thief, I'm an overcome thief, and which means that I'm not going to put you in a situation that's going to tempt that thief to rise back up. So guess what? If I know you're a thief, I can't allow you to count the money. Hello, somebody. If I know you're a thief, I can't put you over things where items can come up missing. So when you look at that man in the mirror and they say, to thy own self be true, we understand. Okay, here's my vice in life. 
here's how I can deal with it, here's how I can overcome it, but guess what? It had to start somewhere, and that's looking at the man in the mirror. Going back to our relationships in life, I know a brother who was married five times. Five times. I said, brother, you must be a glutton for punishment. He said, man, it just seems like that every time I, I get with one and I think this, that, and I said, well, brother, I said, well, I said, I don't want to be a pessimist or anything, but have you looked in the mirror? You know, obviously, you got enough charm to be able to attract five different wives, but at some point, you got to say, let me look at me. Let me deal with me. And that's even when it comes to dealing with Satan. Sometimes we'll give Satan way too much credit than what he deserves. The devil made me to know the devil didn't make you do that. You chose to do that. You chose option Z over option A. And apparently I'm saying option A is God and option Z is the devil. You you chose that route. No one forced your hand. Because the word says when the enemy comes in, not if the enemy comes in, God's going to raise a standard. God's going to have a standard, and the standard is in the word. And it is up to us individually to allow the word to become our compass. I cannot continually expect God to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, when I keep blaming everybody else for my bad choices, when I keep blaming everybody else for my failures. I must look at that man in the mirror and say, okay, self, how did we get here? Okay, self, how do we get out of here? Okay, Seth, what's going to maintain us from going back and returning to our vomit? And it's the word of God. Them that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. And you can be caught up in the Spirit until the cows come home. But the rubber has got to meet the road. And you must need go through your Samaria. You must need deal with what needs to be dealt with. You can run, but you can't hide. Sooner or later, we're going to have to face that music. I may have shared this story with you all some time ago, and a couple of my buddies, they, they laughed at me, but I used to have this real bad phobia of dogs. didn't matter how big the dog was, how small the dog was. I hear barking, and I would tense up. And when I had first came to my beloved home of Prairie View, Texas, I had to walk to get to my classes off from off campus, and it was a little bitty old wiener dog that used to give me the blues, and that wiener dog would run and bark and chase me. To the food. One thing about it, I wasn't late to class because he would chase me, it seemed like, every other day. And then one day, the dog got bold and told his other little buddies about, man, y'all want to have some fun? Watch this. And now what was one dog that was chasing me off became a pack of dogs, and they were various sizes, and they they would chase me, and, and, and I'd be out of breath. I'd run up to the flagpole, and whew. Man, I got away today. And every now and then, I would tip out my apartment and see the little old dog laying asleep. 
and I would try to ease my way around. It seemed like he would wait till I got where I thought I was halfway free, and he would wake up, there he is, and start barking and chasing. When he barked and chased, here come the others. But one day, I got tired. I said, this don't make no sense. I, I'm, I'm running from this dog, and I'm supposed to be this uh, athlete, and, and if people knew I was afraid of these dogs, then they would laugh me right back to St. Louis. And, and, and one day, I was just tired, y'all. I was tired. You ever get to the point where you're just tired? You look at yourself in the mirror and you say, you know what? It ain't them dogs' fault. It's my fault that I'm afraid of these dogs. It's my fault that I'm running from these dogs. It's, it's my fault that I hadn't faced these dogs. And one day, I was just tired. I'm too tired to run. And here come the dog and his crew. And I said, you know what? I, I'm, I'm tired of running. And, and, and I hope I'm making some sense to someone. Some of you listening right now, you've been running from some stuff for a long time. But I'm telling you, look at that man in the mirror and, and, and remind yourself of what God has said about you. God has not given you the spirit of fear. So I'm, I'm walking. I'm tired. My backpack seemed like it weighs 100 pounds. And one day I said, this is it. And here come the dog. And he yapping like he normally do, working up his speed. But I turned around. Instead of running from the dog, I started running toward the dog. And I'm barking, and the dog stopped and looked at me and made a U-turn. I said, I'll be doggone. All this time, I was running from this joker when this joker was afraid of me. Do you realize that Satan knows what's in you better than you know what's in yourself? And the sooner you look at that man in the mirror, the sooner you say enough is enough and you start working with what God has given you, you'll start barking right back at that rascal and he's going to have to make a U-turn. Why? Because God's word will not return void. Hello, somebody. I don't care if you're in a health challenge. I don't care if you're in a relationship challenge. I don't care if you're in a financial challenge. I don't care if your challenge is mental. I don't care what the target of your challenge is. When you look at that man in the mirror, do you see a victorious person standing on the promise of God, or are you seeing someone who has been defeated? And if you happen to be seeing someone who has been defeated, I want you to grab hold to your situation right now. I need you to know and understand that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I don't care what your issue is. God is challenging you to look in the mirror to find a God that is deep within you to take on your current challenge, to take on the next challenge, to give you strength to know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Will you allow the man in the mirror to reveal the glory of God that is down within? That's the challenge for today. Doesn't mean that you're never going to have a challenge to come again in life. But now I know how to deal with it. Doesn't mean you won't have disappointments in life, but now you'll know 
how to deal with it. Don't mean that you're going to get every promotion that comes your way, but you'll learn how to overcome that minor setback for the major comeback. Understanding that when you look in the mirror, you should be reminded of Psalm 139 that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works. I don't care if you are a current alcoholic, if you are a recovered alcoholic. The man in the mirror should say, I am an over come on. I don't care about past failures. I don't care about current failures. When you look at the man in the mirror, you should see that I have the victory. God reminds us in Matthew chapter 6 that you anoint yourself and you go out there and face the world, don't let the world know that you're struggling because God knows that you're struggling. And God says, I'm going to make you an overcomer. When you come to him in prayer, he knows what you have need of. Do you trust what the word says? Will you allow the man in the mirror to tell you, Keep pressing toward the mark of the high calling. Don't allow Satan to overtake that man in the mirror when you see him, when he says, you're not this, and you're not that, and you, you don't have this, and, and you don't have that. And, and it might be true, but look at that man in the mirror and say, I might not be the best, but when I do my best, God is pleased. And let that man in the mirror awaken the God that is in you. I want to pray with you right now. I want to keep you encouraged. I want you to walk with your banner of hope, knowing that this too shall pass. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, victory, victory shall be mine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are seeking you for our comfort. We're seeking you for our restoration. We're seeking you for our healing. We're seeking you for strength in our moment of weakness. I ask you to let me see in the spirit man the victory that has yet to be claimed but is being claimed by faith, being claimed through my works, being claimed through my praise, saying, yes, Lord, from the depths of my soul. Father, I thank you for being the way maker. I thank you for being the promise keeper. I thank you for being bread when I'm hungry and water when I'm thirsty. I thank you for being a friend to the friendless. Now, as we continue to move forward, Remove anything that is not like you. 
give us the confidence knowing that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I want to say thank you for the challenges because with the challenges came the solution. Help us to see it. Help us to stand fast and be unmovable regardless of what we're facing. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we say thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. When the dust settles, only what we do for Christ will last. And that starts with the man in the mirror. I pray that God has encouraged you. I pray that God is keeping you, strengthening you in your moment of weakness. We ask that you stay focused, stay in his word, and that this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I am Pastor Prince Temple Refuge Ministries, located in the beautiful city limits of Prairie View, Texas. We give him all the glory, the praise, and the honor, both now and forever. Remind you that you can join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays for our Bible studies, women's Bible study Tuesdays at noon, General Bible Studies, Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. The phone number to join in is 857-777-4411. Don't forget to join us Sunday mornings by way of the website, obnradio.com. Click on that Listen Live link, or you can dial 857 777 Zero, 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 zero. For those who are led to send offering of support, tithe, whatever the case may be, visit the website, obnradio.com. Click on the donation button. And we thank you in advance for those who We'll go by way of Cash App. It is dollar sign OBN radio. And for those who desire to mail in, P.O. Box 891, Prairie View, Texas, 77446. I am Pastor Prince of the Temple Refuge Ministries. Of course, we're located in the beautiful city limits of Prairie View, Texas. We love you, and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it, so don't you dare try. Until the next time, you all be blessed. We'll see you on the other side.